Hi, I'm Ashlyn Marie, and today we are making this star killer base cake from Star Wars, complete with a shooting isomalt ray. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is take some isomalt crystals and we're going to melt them. Now I add a little bit of distilled water to begin with just to help the melting process start. So you want to boil these until it reaches 320 degrees sea level on a candy thermometer. So remember to make adjustments if you don't live at sea level. Once that comes out you can add whatever flavoring and whatever color you want and you want to start kneading it. Now I'm wearing gloves because this is hot so protect your hands. You want to start folding it and stretching it and folding it and stretching it and what that's doing is making it go uh, more opaque and because it's kneading bubbles in and as you pull those bubbles out they turn into lines and it's going to give this sugar ray this nice long line. Once you've rolled it out and you're nice and happy with the thickness, take a bamboo skewer and stick it in as far as you can. Now the other end is a little bit dull so I melted mine and just kind of kept pulling it out until I brought it to a nice point. Feel free to make your sugar ray end in whatever shape that you desire. And then set it aside and let it dry. So with a ball cake, it's kind of difficult to frost the bottom side. So I'm actually going to frost the bottom side first, then put it on the cake stand and as I flip it over. Take some ganache and frost the entire bottom of the first half of your ball cake. Now you don't have to go all the way down to the bottom because as we flip it over, we'll actually have an opportunity to, to get those sides. Now flip the cake over and put it onto a cake stand and frost the center of your cake. Now we're going to add the top half of the cake. Now I will always say to use ganache because it will glue the two halves together and then continue frosting around the cake. Once you're happy with the roundness of your ganache and your planet, now it's time to decide where we're going to carve out the weapon. So in the movie, the planet looks like this, just a normal planet. Then with this huge amount of electronics and stuff like that, where the weapon comes out of right here. So we're gonna carve this out of the cake. So again, we wanna determine, do we want it on the side? Do we want it up a little bit? So that's where our handy dandy toothpick comes in. <laughs> this way, we don't have to actually start carving. We can kind of draw it out until we're happy with it. You can always smooth the ganache over again later if you make a mistake. And since this is an eight inch ball, this is gonna be about a one inch trough. And then of course, the weapon area itself is bigger. So we're gonna wanna cut that open a little bit wider. Not super deep, but deep enough. And because our cake was frozen when we uh, started frosting this, you can actually touch the ganache now. Of course, my hand will melt it and it will get pretty messy pretty quickly, but I can touch it a little bit. Just take your time. And then once you've cut that out, go ahead and take a fork and dig out the area that you've cut. And then with whatever's left, you wanna clean it up with a smaller knife, making sure there's nice straight edges. Now taking a smaller frosting spatula, we're gonna frost the inside of this. And make sure as you frost with the ganache that you leave yourself nice sharp edges. The ganache will set and that will help as you put the fondant over this. Now take some gray fondant and press it down into your trough. Now mine is a little bit under a quarter of an inch thick, but don't worry, we're gonna thin it out and give ourselves plenty of room. So I used a small ball tool to put it down into all the corners and then a nice small sharp knife to cut away all the extra and that will give us enough space to work. Then a smaller ball tool to really sharpen those edges, the detail in the corner. In fact, I even grabbed one of my fondant smoothers that has those nice sharp edges to really press against the sides. Now we want to create that area that goes right in here and this circle is the perfect size. So. Now this is our ray, and it's about the same size as this tip. So we know that our inner hole needs to be about that big. Paint the back side of this and place it right inside. Now rolling out your gray fondant even thinner, we're gonna cut out circles with like a tip 10 and then cut out little circles within those circles from like a tip three. Those are creating little itty bitty like donuts that we're putting around the weapon area. And to get this to stick to each other, I just use some clear alcohol. 
Now working with this same gray fondant, we're gonna roll out a little strip about uh, three quarters of an inch wide, the same thickness as the depth of your trough. And you want one side to be slightly thicker and one side to be a lot thinner, little wedges, and then cut those into strips. And then we're gonna take these little wedges and put them inside the top and bottom of the trough on both sides of the weapons. Now you wanna soften up some of the gray fondant by mixing it in with some shortening and then putting it in a clay extruder, one that I only use for cake decorating. And we're gonna extrude a little itty bitty tube and we're gonna cut about an inch and a half and put it on both sides of the weapon area. There's a lot of tubing on the inside, the detail work of this weapon. You can add a lot more tubing than I did. Uh, I just figure the size of the cake, you don't wanna go too detailed, it starts to get messy. Now extrude some more, even thinner, more spaghetti size and cut a little itty bitty section about a quarter of an inch in uh, in length and we're going to put that around each side of this now you can look at the pictures of the star killer base cake and kind of decide for yourself what details you feel are really going to emphasize uh, the details of this cake this is the thing that stood out to me the tubes on both sides with extra tubing over it so that's the details that i added now marbleize some gray fondant and some white fondant together and then I sliced them into discs and what that's doing is giving me a ton of different swirls of various sizes. Then take some clear alcohol and roll each of the discs into the clear alcohol and then we're going to stick them together. And then what that's going to do is create all of these little weather pattern looks as we roll it out of various sizes. So stick it together with the clear alcohol and then just start rolling. It will kind of separate a little bit at first, just keep working. If for some reason your discs have dried enough, they're not sticking together, you can always create a fresh cut in between some of your discs and that can really help it stick together too if it's having trouble. So now you can see those beautiful swirls. We're going to put it over the top. And let it stretch out. Now notice this doesn't even come close to covering this. It's because I rolled it really thick so I could stretch it because when you're kind of trying to get a ball shape like this, stretching is really the best way to go. I'm using a cornstarch powder sugar mixture on my hand. And as you start to get ripples, make sure to press them down into place. You just want to go through with your smoothing tool and smooth your ball, making sure that anywhere where maybe your swirls came together, it's still nice and connected. So you notice, you see a bubble right here? That's because there's nothing for that fondant to attach to. And so it's a bubble. Now we don't want to, we don't want to cut too much, so be careful with this. You can always cut more if you need to, so it's better to cut too little and then have to cut more later. Once you've cut everything away and exposed it, I noticed that my uh, weapon area was drooping a little bit, so I just stuck a tip in it that was the same size as my weapon and I let it dry for a few hours. Uh, now, you can be done right now, but I decided that I didn't want it to be perfectly smooth. I wanted a little bit of texture. So I took some white food coloring and I took a toothbrush actually, and I splattered it all over the cake. Now, I'm not sure how much this really made it look like a planet, but I did love that it gave it more depth. Um, and don't forget to cover your exposed area as you're splattering. It probably should have splattered before cutting. And now it's time to add our ray. Make sure that you've cut your skewer so that it won't stick out the other side of the cake uh, when you press it all the way in, but it's long enough that it also won't droop. Ooh. And we're all finished. This is the centerpiece of our party table. It's gonna look awesome. My daughter is super excited about it. In the description box down below, there'll be a link to the full party and all of the videos as I add them and recipes and all of that will be there. Thanks for watching.